In this video, we're going to explore a one-to-many mapping in Spring JPA, and we're going to continue with an example we've been building where we're getting the concept of plants from a JSON data source. And for plants, we have a one-to-many relationship with specimens. So a plant is the scientific definition of a plant, and a specimen is a plant I can actually touch. Now we have specimens stored in a, in a MySQL database, and we also have photos stored in a MySQL database. So a specimen can have a one-to-many relationship with photos. In other words, I could take three pictures of one single tree. Those three pictures would be related to that specimen. And you see I have not exactly crow's feet here, but you can see that plant ID is the primary key of the plants table. And it's a foreign key from the specimens table to the plants table. Of course, plants isn't really a table. It's more of a JSON stream, but nonetheless. Specimen ID is the primary key of the specimen table, and it is the foreign key from the photos table back to the specimen table, where photo ID is the primary key of the photos table. So this is the relationship that we're looking at, the relationship between specimen and photos. What we need here is the one-to-many annotation as well as the mapped by attribute. So without further ado, let me jump in and I'll start by showing you a demo. In our existing application, we can search at the top for a plant, and that will return results from our JSON feed. So you see, I can click on the fireweed, for instance, and now we can see specimens that are pulled from our database. What we want to eventually do is show a photo carousel here of the photos for this specimen. But to do that, we need to be able to walk from specimen to photo, and that's what we're about to do. You may recall in a previous video, we set up a photo DTO to create this photo table or this photo concept, and we set a many to one relationship there so that we could add photos to specimens after the photo was created. This time we're going to go in the other direction. We're going to start with the specimen and we want to walk down to all the photos that belong to that specimen. It's actually quite straightforward. We simply need to make a new attribute. Let's say private list photo photos, just as we've done here. And now on top of this, we can add the one to many annotation. And we have to give it a mapped by attribute. Now mapped by is a little bit confusing. And when I search for information on the internet, it was actually kind of hard to figure out what this does because with the value that we give this is a bit ambiguous. Remember, we're in specimen. What we want to have in the mapped by, a reference to the foreign key, essentially, that we are going to refer to from the one side of the one-to-many relationship. And forgive me, I know that sounds a little bit confusing, but essentially the specimen is the one side, the photo is the many side. We're reaching into the photo DTO and we're saying, what key do we use from photo to look back at specimen? And that key happens to be, guess what? Specimen. So here, when we go and populate our attribute, mapped by equals specimen. And that's why I'd say it can get a bit confusing because you're in the specimen class, you're looking at this list and you see mapped by specimen, and it's not so obvious that this word specimen is actually referring to an attribute down here in this class, not so much the class that we're currently in, which also happens to be called specimen. One important note, if you happen to be using Lombok annotations, what you see is the at data annotation on top of our photo class. Lombok will generate a two string for you automatically. And what it does is look at all the attributes and try to print them out. In doing so, Lombok ends up looking from the photo class up to the specimen, which is the one side of this one-to-many again. And you end up getting into a recursive relationship where it then goes to specimen, and from specimen it tries to get to the photo, and then from the photo it tries to go back up to the specimen. So if you implement what I've done so far and you get a Stack Overflow error and you're using Lombok, add one more annotation to this attribute here, which is the one side of the one to many from photos being the many specimen being the one and dot two string dot exclude. And that basically says exempt this from the two string and only show these fields. And then we don't get into that infinite recursion or stack overflow scenario. Once we've done that, we're really in good shape. We've done all we need to do. I'm at the specimen detail page and you see going along with our RESTful service example, we have the plant ID in the URL and we're showing all of the specimens that are associated with that plant. But take a look at this. Now you see if a specimen does not have a photo, it's represented by empty array. Where if a specimen does have a photo or multiple photos, 
you'll see the square bracket indicating an array, and then you'll see the two string of the photo itself. Let's take a look at this in slow motion through the debugger through something I've already set up, plant ID 85. So I hit that and you notice that the IntelliJ debugger lights up, meaning it's waiting for me. And we're just looking at the controller right now. I choose F8 and I choose F8 and now we're going to do the fetch specimens by plant ID call we've always done. I choose F8, now I mouse over the specimen object, we see it's an array of one, we go to the specimen, and then we go to the photo, and you see that we have indeed one photo associated with this. Now hang on a second, how did it know to do that? Because in this video the only thing I've done is I've added this at one to many mapping, how did it know to wire up to that controller endpoint? Well guess what, that's pretty much automatic. The specimen has this attribute called photos, and since we've annotated it, it says, oh okay, if I want to populate this, I need to run a one to many query from me, a specimen, to the photos that belong to me using this unique ID as a primary key on the specimen side and a foreign key on the photo side. But how do we get from the controller to there? Well, remember the controller is calling down to fetch specimens by plant ID in our service layer, and we have fetch specimens by plant ID, and you notice that that's simply running down to the specimen DIO and calling a very similar method. If we look at our specimen DIO, fetch specimens by plant ID, it's going to our specimen repository, which is our Spring JPA class, and that has a predefined query in it. When that query runs and it populates our specimens, it notices this and it says, oh, okay, I have to run one more query to populate this. So a lot of this just happens magically by using annotations, and that's why we like Spring. So if we go ahead and allow our breakpoint to continue, and then we go back and look at the results, we know we now have enough detail to make a nice look and feel for our specimen, and then with our photos we could do something like put them in a carousel. So that's where we will go with our next video. Thanks for watching this one. I look forward to reading your comments.